its fashion influences. Even if you've never watched a single episode or read a single issue of Sailor Moon, you probably still recognize this colorful group of ass-kicking magical girls. First published in 1991 and followed by a popular anime in 1992, the series is widely considered one of the most influential manga of all time, changing the magical girl genre forever and allowing for the eventual creation of shows like The Winx Club and Steven Universe. The series centers around a clumsy 14-year-old named Usagi who discovers that her destiny is to become the legendary warrior Sailor Moon, and alongside the other Sailor Scouts, she must defend the Earth and the galaxy from evil. Naoko Takeuchi, the author and artist of the series, was greatly influenced by her own life when creating Sailor Moon, and her love of art, astronomy, and fashion helped give the series its unique aesthetic. Besides being many people's first introduction to anime, Sailor Moon has also become a source of fashion inspiration, with the Sailor Scouts outfits exemplifying Japanese street style and the villains coming right off the runway. In today's video, we'll be looking at some of the most memorable outfits that appear in the Sailor Moon series and examine where their real-world influences came from. Let's get into it. During the Meiji era, which lasted between 1868 to 1912, Japan hoped to modernize the country in an attempt to resist Western colonization, and this restoration project resulted in drastic changes to their social structure, economy, military, and education system. In 1872, they announced Gakusei, the first national plan for education, which intended to make elementary school mandatory in order to increase the country's literacy rate. Up until that point, only children from especially wealthy families were able to go to school. And these students typically wore traditional formal clothing, which included kimono for girls and hakama for boys. Towards the end of the Meiji era, Japan began to take on more and more Western influence, and school uniforms were noticeably affected, with male students beginning to wear gakuran, which literally translated to Western student, and took inspiration from the Waffenrock, a military uniform that was used in Prussia. At the same time, female students attempted to wear western dresses, but they were found to be impractical, so they wore hakama instead, with the silhouette and color being slightly adjusted to differentiate between traditional Japanese menswear. Both the hakama and gakuran can still be seen in Japanese schools today. In 1846, Queen Victoria commissioned a miniature version of the British Royal Navy's uniform for her son, Prince Albert, introducing the style into mainstream fashion. And by the 1870s, these maritime-inspired outfits had become popular with both boys and girls, and nautical elements like blue and white stripes, flap collars, and brimmed caps have gone in and out of fashion ever since. Sailor dresses, also known as Peter Thompson dresses, became popular in America in the early 20th century, with the ensembles being promoted as an ideal uniform for female students, helping to establish a standardized style of clothing, something that Japan hoped to replicate in order to instill a sense of discipline and community among their youth. With the Western influence on Japan growing, serafuku began to appear in schools, and by the 1920s they had become the uniform of choice. Because of how easy they were to sew, many home economic classes gave sailor outfits as assignments, and as a result, the style was able to quickly spread across the country. Serafuku began to be phased out of Japanese schools in the 1970s in response to the rise of female delinquents, sukeban, who would modify their uniforms by cropping their tops and lengthening their skirts, with schools switching to Western Catholic school-style uniforms to try to combat the phenomenon. This had a lasting effect, and today, over 80% of Japanese high schools have Western-style skirts and blazers as part of their uniforms, with serafuku generally being associated with middle school students. Naoko Takeuchi herself went to a school with sailor uniforms, and they wound up appearing in many of her manga, including Sailor Moon. In early drafts of their battle outfits, each of the girls had their own unique designs, barely relating to the others at all. But after her editor, Fumio Osano, recommended that she make their outfits variations on the serafuku, their look became more cohesive, only differing in color, which related to their personality, zodiac sign, planet, or birthstone. Similar to how school uniforms were introduced in Japan to unite the youth, the Sailor Scouts outfits are symbolic of how they all have a single goal in mind, while also hinting at their age, reminding the audience that the majority are only in middle school at the time the show takes place, which is something that is easy to forget when they're running around fighting monsters. 
Most importantly, their outfits reiterate one of the biggest messages in the series, that women can be powerful even if they're feminine. Unlike many other animated shows, the main cast of Sailor Moon would regularly change their outfits, wearing everything from crop tops to tailored trousers to sundresses, taking notes from various subcultures that were popular in Japan during the late 80s and early 90s. In the 1980s, Japan was experiencing a post-war economic boom, and as a result, there was an unprecedented amount of young women entering the workforce, with a significant portion taking on secretarial work. As the first person you saw when entering an office, these women paid particularly close attention to their appearance and were dubbed Office Ladies, or OL for short. Their style of clothing was sophisticated and mature while incorporating youthful colors and patterns. Often wearing bold suit jackets and fitted dresses, these outfits were alluring yet still work appropriate. Ballet flats, sweater vests, and cardigans make regular appearances on Sailor Moon, especially on characters who are more studious. And this is an ode to the popular preppy trend. Dating all the way back to the 1910s, preppy style has long been associated with the upper crust, and Japanese students took to adopting the aesthetic as it regained popularity in America and the UK. Another popular style that began in the 1980s was otome, which had sweet and feminine elements like lace, long skirts, puff sleeves, and large collars. This style was extremely popular among students, including those in Sailor Moon and would eventually become the basis for Lolita style and kawaii culture. In the early 90s, Shibukaji, Shibuya Casual, rose to prominence and was an ode to laid-back European fashion. The look was simple, featuring jeans, fitted blazers, leather jackets, crisp blouses, turtlenecks, and monogrammed accessories. A lover of high fashion, Naoko Takeuchi seems to have a particular fondness for Chanel and Versace, regularly drawing the Sailor Scouts in pieces that are inspired by various collections. Only featured in illustrations, we see both Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus wearing Versace, likely an ode to their romantic relationship. While Sailor Venus wears an iconic Chanel suit that also made an appearance on the nanny. Sailor Pluto wears luxury designs most often, likely because she's the oldest and most fashion-forward of the bunch, and her character is seen wearing a purple suit from the Chanel 1992 spring-summer ready-to-wear collection on multiple occasions. She also wears a black chain dress from Chanel's haute couture collection from the same season, which we've done an entire video about. Just to prove how much Naoko loves Chanel, Natsuna Sakurada, who only appears in the Sailor V manga, is almost exclusively shown wearing the brand. And yes, I'm jealous. As the previous incarnation of Sailor Moon, Princess Serenity is given one of the more intricate outfits in the series, which just so happens to be loaded with historical fashion references. The gown itself is a recreation of the Palladio dress designed by Gianfranco Ferre for the 1992 Christian Dior Spring Summer Haute Couture collection. Ferre was the creative director for Christian Dior between 1989 and 1996, preceding John Galliano, and he was referred to as the architect of fashion in honor of his attention to the balance and structure of each of his garments. His 1992 collection took notes from the neoclassical movement, specifically the directoire style of the late 1790s and the empire style of the early 1800s, with the Palladio dress using pleated silk chiffon to mimic an ionic column. Following the French Revolution in 1789, the theatrical fashions of the aristocracy, which included colorful fabrics, excessive trim, and exaggerated silhouettes, were pushed out in favor of simplistic designs that were an ode to classical antiquity. During this period, women's dresses took influence from ancient Greek and Roman garments like tunics, chiton, or peplos, and as a result, many designs featured a higher waist, cap sleeves, and narrow skirts. This renewed fascination with the past was likely due to the recent discoveries of Pompeii and Herculaneum, with these excavations fostering the incorrect assumption that ancient women only wore white, prompting popular fashions to be similarly devoid of color, which actually wound up benefiting women of the time period as it allowed for clothes to be more regularly and easily washed. Ostentatious designs made a return by the 1830s, but neoclassicism saw bouts of popularity in the 1910s, 1970s, and more recently in the 1990s. 
with the latter's return being owed to the release of several film and television adaptations of Jane Austen's novels, which were set at the turn of the 19th century. This interest eventually trickled down into mainstream fashion, and by the 2000s, empire waistlines and capped sleeves had come back with a vengeance. While the influence of Gianfranco Ferre's design on Princess Serenity's dress is obvious, there are a few subtle differences like the unstructured A-line silhouette and bow detail that give the dress a youthful quality that's more fitting for Usagi's character. When she eventually becomes Neo-Queen Serenity, she sports an altered version of the original dress that has a larger wing-shaped bow on the back. This new design element is an ode to Roberto Capucci's Angel of Gold dress from 1987, which highlighted the designer's habit of manipulating fabric into unique shapes. Princess Serenity is named after the Greek goddess of the moon, Selene, who in her most well-known myth falls in love with a mortal named Endymion, the same name as her lover in Sailor Moon. Besides their story sharing parallels, this also makes the choice of a Grecian-inspired dress for Princess Serenity all the more fitting, proving that Naoko Takeuchi wasn't just dressing the characters in whatever she thought looked nice, but designs that held significance as well. The villains in Sailor Moon aren't lacking in the fashion department either, with the majority wearing clothing inspired by Terry Mugler, who was known for his avant-garde and theatrical designs. Because these characters appeared less often than the Sailor Scouts, they were able to have more dramatic looks, and with their figure-hugging gowns, teeny-tiny bodysuits, and armored breastplates, they were as stylish as they were evil. There's so many villains in Sailor Moon that it'd be impossible to talk about them all. So we're just going to do a rapid fire roundup of some of our favorite high fashion references. Koan wears a bodysuit from Mugler's 1992 Fall Winter Haute Couture collection, even shaping her hair into two points like the model did. For Queen Beryl, Takeuchi took inspiration from multiple Mugler designs, giving the character a fitted gown with a dramatic bust. Sailor Galaxia wears an all-gold look that resembles one from the 1995 Fall Winter Haute Couture show, an ensemble that has gone on to be worn by both Beyoncé and Celine Dion. Snow Queen Kaguya doesn't wear much clothing, but the silhouette of her design, from the headpiece to the skirt, are incredibly similar to this Fall Winter 1999 gown. And it might be a stretch, but I think Fisheye's puff jumpsuit looks incredibly similar to these Fall Winter 1991 designs. It's important to note that even Sailor Saturn is drawn in Mugler when her character has more of an antagonistic role, proving that even in manga, costume design can serve a purpose. There are a few villains in Sailor Moon who wear other designers, like Calaveras' simplified version of this Christian Lacroix look from Fall Winter 1992. Black Lady wears a dress that takes inspiration from a 1992 ad campaign for Yves Saint Laurent's perfume, which starred Kate Moss, and Naoko Takeuchi even drew the character in a similar pose. Berthier wears a blue bodysuit that features a similar cutout as this Versace 1991 dress, which was most recently worn by Kim Kardashian. These high fashion inspirations aren't limited to female villains either, with these characters wearing looks inspired by Terry Mugler's 1986 Fall Winter Collection, which were futuristic takes on military uniforms. Meanwhile, Sapphire's outfit could be seen as a very loose interpretation of this Mugler ensemble from 1991. Considering all of the fashion references we've managed to find so far, I wouldn't be surprised if there are even more out there, especially considering Naoko Takeuchi's knowledge of the subject, so make sure to comment down below if you can think of any others. I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon! Bye!